Hey, this is AJ from uh, BleedingEdgeSecurity.com giving you another video about how to use WinHex. Today we're going to basically just show two, maybe three methods of file recovery with WinHex. The first method, you open up WinHex, and go to Tools, go to Open Disk, and under Physical Media you'll see several, probably, including a DVD drive, maybe some USB drives that are plugged in, but you want this hard disk here, your main hard drive. Click OK. Now before you do anything forensically, even if it's not file recovery, you should always take a new volume snapshot. This ensures that the image of your file system is up to date. Um, if you're using an old snapshot, for instance, that was taken a month ago and you're trying to recover files that were created and deleted just a week or two ago, then they're not even going to show up in the current snapshot. So you need to take a new volume snapshot. It's uh, First, you select partition you're going to work on. Just double click on it, and then you can see the folders here. Then tools, disk tools, take new volume snapshot. It takes about 15, 20 seconds. Actually, less than that. I guess it takes about 10 seconds, but it's quick, um, and it'll get done here. Now, once that's done, uh, see, it didn't pop up a message box for me, but. If there's anything different between this snapshot and the last one that's taken, it will actually display the difference between the two snapshots. All right, now that we're here, uh, the first method is automated file recovery. Now you go to Tools, Disk Tools, File Recovery by Type. You select over here under File Types the type of file that you're looking for. If you deleted a document file on accident, then you'd go up here to MS Office Doc. But you can see here there's a lot of other file types that's here available for you to recover. But just for this uh, demo, we're going to act like we deleted an Office document. Here you set the default file size, the beginning size, then the maximum size. You want to keep this range as small as possible so that you have a smaller amount of results that come back from the search. If this is a, too big of a range here, you may have a couple of hundred false positives come back, and that's not good. Right here, file name prefix is just a string that'll help you, uh, you know, can help narrow down what you're looking for. Uh, the main thing here is your output folder. You click on this and select a folder to send all the recovered files to. And here you can select where to look for file headers. You can look everywhere, you can look only in free clusters, or you can only look in allocated space. We're going to look everywhere. And we're going to search at cluster boundaries if possible. Once you've got all this selected, you hit OK. And this right here takes a long time. It's going to get basically uh, traverse the entire disk image looking for uh, files that have been deleted that match the signature that you pointed it towards. Uh, and when this is done, which like I said, it takes a while, all the recovered files are going to be sent back to the folder you chose. In our case, it was the My Documents folder. We're going to abort this because we don't really have time to go through all of it. But it'll tell you how many files are recovered and how many are incomplete or corrupted. And that can be a result from partially overwritten pieces of the file. Uh, that's why it's a good idea to recover a file as soon as possible after you accidentally delete it. Because if you wait around too long, it may get overwritten completely or partially overwritten. All right, now the second way to recover a file is if you know what folder the file was in when it was deleted, you can just go to that folder and actually click on the file and manually recover it. Uh, in our case, we're going to go to Desktop, Documents and Settings, your user profile, Desktop. Then you would just find the file you wanted to recover, right-click on it, go to Recover Copy, point it to the directory you want the recovered file sent to, and click OK and right there it tells you one file and uh, no directories were recovered then you would go to your my documents folder oops let's see here and there it is the recovered file right there at the bottom now there's a third way to recover a file that I'll mention briefly but I can't really demonstrate because I don't really know how to do it uh, you go to the, your hard disk right to partition and you're actually gonna search for text this can either be the name of the file or some data that's inside the file. If it's like a Word document or a text file, I guess you could do it with binary too. Though you could do it with hex, 
you could if you know some hexadecimal that was inside of the file you're looking for like an exe file you could put some hexadecimal in here and actually search for that but you basically put in some text that is either inside the deleted file or the name of the deleted file and you hit OK and it's going to search the entire disk looking for strings that match that and they'll show up right here in this display window now sometimes it'll be a temp file that you're not looking for or it'll be a partial match you can uh, always tell it to search again and keep going and going until you find the right one now we're going to stop this because it would take a long long time All right. if you found the file you wanted to recover using this window right here your search would end and it would show you where you're at in the file you would actually start at one of these you'd copy well, let me get to where some data is at okay you would actually copy by highlighting just like you highlight some text in notepad and then you could tell it to write the file to output and you could name the file the same thing the original file was named but the tricky thing about that is you gotta make sure you're starting in the right place uh, doing it this way there's no way to tell if the file's been corrupted overwritten so you're really shooting in the dark per se uh, but the best way I think is the automated recovery or simply going here like I showed you through the file explorer and then actually clicking on it and going to recover copy but that's two ways to uh, recover data in WinHex uh, I'll show you one last thing before I leave you here before you do anything in WinHex you need to go to options go to edit mode you need to make sure you're in read only mode because if you're in in place mode which is editable it's going to give you these warnings all files and disks open in edit mode modifications take place immediately without prompting you which means if you accidentally modify something it's there and you can seriously corrupt your hard disk if you modify some storage bits that you didn't mean to modify it could be your windows registry you accidentally overwrit there's no telling what it could be that was overwritten so you're best to stay off of here in read only mode until you know what the crap you're doing in WinHex but that's all about all there is to this video I just wanted to go over those quick things show you if you haven't been to the website check it out at www.bleedingedgesecurity.com uh, we have a forum a blog uh, you can check us out on Twitter or Facebook and uh, hope to see you over there make sure you register in the forum uh, we'd like to hear from you uh, it's a good place not only to learn but to help teach others what you know we can all learn more by listening and teaching each other so I hope you enjoyed this video. Look for more soon. Take care.